What's up guys, thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee where we like to save and restore cars. My name is Kurt and we are working on a 1995 3000 GT Mitsubishi. Now this is not the VR4, not the all-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, turbocharged engine. This is the base model, but this base model deserves to be saved because it was well taken care of it just needs a few maintenance items. So at the auction, this was said to have a bad clutch. Clutch pedal goes all the way to the floor. So we're gonna dig into that. There are a few other minor little fixes we need to do. So let's get into it. All right, so the first item of business is taking a look at this clutch pedal. And what we have is literally a clutch pedal that goes to the floor. Now if we look up underneath we can kind of see a little bit of fluid possibly coming through so what i'm first leading to think is we need to look at the master clutch cylinder and as well the slave so what we want to do is lift up the car and take care of that and there is also just a minor detail but the radio antenna is bent and not going back down it is stuck in the up position so we'll want to address that the other item is the driver's side window it jams right about there so we'll want to pull the door panel off for that see what's going on there and then the only other item just checking out this yeah we'll want to fix that too so what we we'll want to do first is get the car up because we need to see what parts we need to order and especially if the clutch master and slave cylinder are indeed broken. I don't think it's a physical clutch problem. So let's get the car up, pull the wheels off. We'll also be taking a look at brakes and brake rotors just to make sure those are all good. So let's get this car up. But we have a tool now that's going to help us in the garage and that tool comes from Quick Jack and we went out and purchased this because we definitely needed this and it's gonna make working on under cars so much easier. So let's check that out. So we are stoked to have the QuickJack BL5000 SLX and this is gonna just be able to help us get these cars up and work under them when we need to. So this will give us adequate space to be able to diagnose and, and fix and replace or work on anything underneath any of our project cars. So let's kind of jump into the engine compartment here. Take a look at what we're working with. So we have our clutch master cylinder here. Nothing major wrong up on this end. So now what we we'll want to do is just kind of look underneath the car, see what we've got going on. And that right there is another clue that this might be the problem. So let's slide under there and see what we can see. And right in here, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but there is our slave cylinder and it is leaking really good. It is leaking all over. So we're going to want to go ahead and order up that and while we're at it might as well order a master cylinder for the clutch. So to get ready to replace the slave cylinder for the clutch and the master, I want to make some room in this area as the transmission is right below here. So we're going to take the air box out and then assess what else we need to remove. And now with the air box removed, you can really see that it is just draining all over the place. We'll go ahead and order the slave and master cylinders for the clutch and also get a new air filter for this guy. And then we'll check the brakes. All right, now with the wheels off, we're taking a look. Yeah, they've been sitting for a while, so the, the rotors are a little rusted. But there are no deep grooves. There's about a millimeter left on the pads up front. So let's go check the back. And the same story is on the rear. We've got no deep grooves in the rotor, just a little bit of surface rust from sitting. And the brake pads back here, we're looking at about, I think I measured a half a millimeter. So I think we have a little bit of life left in these brake pads. What we'll do is when we fix the clutch, since this hasn't been driven, we'll give it a test drive and then see if we need to replace if there's any weird sounds or any warped rotors. 
So now we're going to move on to the door and what we want to do is pull off this door panel. So very carefully we're going to do that. All right, so now with the panel off, what we did is we took the controls off of the door panel and that way we can roll up the windows and with our ignition on, we can just kind of roll the window up and see if we can see any binding before we go tearing off this vapor barrier. So where it's at, you can hear a little bit of crunching. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and take this vapor barrier off and just look at the tracks and the motor and see if we can just clean it and grease it back up. And just looking over this really quick, I think this is our culprit. This piece should be perpendicular with the rail and it definitely is not. So what we're going to have to do is try to figure out a way to address this which might mean to take it off. So we got the window regulator out and the way we did that was there was a couple bolts here, a couple up here and about three right here for the motor. And taking a look at this, this part is completely broken off and I would say it is also bent. So what we're gonna have to do is go ahead and order a new window regulator and just replace it. All right, so we got our new window regulator, so we're gonna go ahead and put that in, and we'll just want to line up the window above this clip here, so we can bolt it all up. And now besides a annoying key intone, I just need to do some final adjustments and we have a working window. So now that we have the window adjusted and we went through and lubed up all the tracks, goes up and down way better. We're gonna go ahead and put the vapor barrier back on and of course the door panel and we should be done with this door. All right, we've got the door put back together so that's done. And then also we went ahead and put the glove box hinge pins back. Those were broken off, so we replaced those. So pretty much inside is sorted. So now we're gonna take a look at replacing the antenna. And this is a power antenna. The mast is stuck and it's even bent right there. So what we're gonna need to do is pull back this panel and then access it from inside, remove it and put in a new one. guys so we ran out of time so we finished up the antenna got it fine-tuned and all aligned properly so it looks good so now we need to move on to doing the clutch that's gonna need its own episode all into itself so stay tuned for that appreciate you guys watching if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe if you haven't also hit that like don't forget to share and stay tuned for the next one and until then you have a good one